all systems nominal. Early on when I started this whole YouTube thing, I made a video giving my thoughts on MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries when it released on Steam back in May last year. Since then, we've seen two DLC drop for Succession War mini-campaign Legend of the Kestrel Lancers in September, and just now, Call to Arms, a smaller offering focusing on expanding the Rock'em Sock'em Robots melee that was introduced in a free update alongside the former. Call to Arms introduces melee weapons, nine in total, along with nearly two dozen new battle mech variants able to wield them, including the first such mech in Battletech canon, the Hatchet Man. Said hatchet-wielding medium mech is the subject of a five-mission quest line where you'll work for Isle of Sky Separatists to acquire it and blow a bunch more to scrap in the process. Prior to this, melee in Mercs 5 was a pretty big risk. You obviously need to get in close to strike, and while you did do some decent enough damage with your big metal fists, you'd also be placing yourself in a position to get SRM to the face, so it often wasn't the best trade-off. Now, however, you're holding a giant sword or axe the size of a bus in said fist, and not only do you reach further, but the damage you do is exponentially higher. Suddenly, that melee attack is able to take off limbs and cleave through cockpits, especially on lighter mechs. However, before you can get started doing said cleaving, you'll need to acquire a mech able to do so, which may annoy some who expect it to be able to just pick up a mech scale blade and get right to it. Only the new mechs added with this DLC have hard points able to equip melee weapons, with all others only able to upgrade the knuckles on their hands, so you'll need to get out there and either salvage or buy these new war machines with hard one C builds. Luckily, the Hatchetman quest doesn't wait until the last mission to give you one, and it's relatively low on the difficulty scale, so you won't have to wait long. A new career mode start has also been added for it, which gives you 8 light and medium mechs, and also begins a year before the Kestrel Lancers missions, so you don't miss out on those either. In addition to all this melee mayhem, there are three new biomes to fight in, Hoodoo Desert, Rubelite, and Scrapyard. All of them look really good and are complemented by an upgrade to the game's weather effects, and new additions to the soundtrack, and can I just stop for a moment and praise Sean Colton? Because not only is the music in Mercs 5 good enough to compare positively with Ji-Hun Huang's work on an early MechWarrior franchise, but the new tracks Sean composed for Call to Arms are simply metal as fuck. Seriously, phenomenal work, man. Oh yeah, there's also something called a Storm Surge skin you can apply to your mechs. Looks okay, I guess. Not gonna lie, I really don't care about that kind of thing. More importantly, there's also been a free update to go along with the DLC, and it's made a few significant changes. Aside from some balancing tweaks, the game now allows you to switch to another mech when yours is taken out, meaning that so long as a single one of your lance mates is still standing, you can keep playing. There's also more info on the star map regarding conflict zone penalties and contract intel, as well as a visually reworked negotiation screen. More importantly, at least for me, is the abandonment of strict tonnage limits for a more flexible approach, where going heavy will cost you an increasing percentage of both your cash reward and salvage shares. And the penalties for this go up fast, encouraging you to stay close to the recommended weight instead of just dropping a Steiner Scout Lance on every mission. Personally, I don't mind, because A, curb stomping everything without any challenge eventually gets boring if you keep doing it enough, and B, my main problem with the original system was that it was incredibly annoying when you were just a hair over the limit and couldn't fit your full lance. No problem now. So, should you be getting Call to Arms? Well, if you enjoy MechWarrior 5's gameplay, and especially the melee aspect, then I'd say it's a no-brainer. It doesn't affect much more than that and probably won't change your mind if you've already decided that the game wasn't your cup of tea. There isn't quite as much content as the prior DLCs, but I'd say the lower price point reflects this and what is there is of very good quality. And the update has also addressed a few of my personal pet peeves with the game. Besides, you can run around with a giant weeb robot slashing other giant robots with a massive katana. For a good number of you, I'd just describe one hell of a good time.
All primary objectives complete. Mission successful.